Welcome back to All About Articulation, where we do a deeper dive into the articulation of some of your favorite action figures while glossing over things like sculpt, paint apps, character history, uh, accessories, because I suck at that. And there are already so many great reviews on YouTube who do that already, so I don't want to waste your time. Today we are going to review the McFalling Toys um, DC Multiverse... Uh, I believe it's the White Knight Returns Azrael, a uh, character that I know practically next to nothing about. He kind of was uh, introduced into the comic book world storylines uh, after I kind of stopped collecting comics and went off to college. Yeah, I'm pretty old, dudes. Um, but <laughs> Azrael's been around since I think the 90s, and he's already considered like past my past my time. But uh, I got back into it, uh, we're kind of catching up now, and uh, it's a pretty cool character. Anyway, a, a couple of initial thoughts on um, on this guy. Um, one of the big qualms that I had was that he, and a lot of people felt this way too, he, he, he seemed a little short. Um, if you look at his proportions, he's very top-heavy, very bulky. Not just because of the armor, but like if you just look at his shoulders, if you look at his arms, he's a big guy. Even on the card that the figure came with, in the back of his bio stats, it said he's 6'4". So if he's 6'4", um, well, he should be a lot taller, being that this is a 7 inch, 1 tenth scale line. But, for example, you have Joker over here, uh, who, although it's not, it's the same lines McFarlane toys but not in the same wave this is technically an Arkham Asylum Joker and um, not part of the whole White Knight storyline but still if I take off these and by the way I love these things I love these things. every 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 action figure should come with a, a little stand it doesn't have to be a flight stand just one of these very small thin little stands that just helps these figures stand up so much better and the chances of getting getting knocked over are so much so much smaller Marvel Legends I'm talking to you but anyway so if Azrael is 6'4 all right that make Joker I don't know what is he like 6 6 2 6 3 and Joker ain't that tall so McFarlane's toys they still it still has a, a, a little bit of a problem with scaling in height but it seems like they're gonna get that issue resolved but I will say this though within the white knight wave of figures like this uh, white knight batman over here in the back they are in scale together so be that as it may all right um love this love the design love the design love these there it's these I don't know cape strands whatever they are they're very very soft from this part down uh, but it's very very stiff from this part over to the uh, to the shoulder pad so you get very little movement over here but then you get a lot of free flowing movement in the back here so stiff over here and then very 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 soft here I, w I wish all characters hair especially characters, female characters with long hair were made out of this material and capes too then I would never have a problem with with articulation look at that it's like spaghetti okay so he uh, very top heavy the armor of his upper body does hinder a lot of articulation especially his left our right his left shoulder piece here it, this is very hard plastic and it does not bend it does not give way very any if at all so his his right shoulder can come up to about that much it can go past horizontal but his his left shoulder can only go up that far so it's kind of like he's doing like a crooked airplane you know type of thing um i did look carefully around and I, and I just thought could he possibly can we possibly take this off and I think it can with maybe like an exacto knife and some heat you could probably remove like this piece here 
this is all one connected piece from all that this this sort of um, fabric looking plastic and the gold shoulder shoulder pads you can see that it's like it's like glued in right there and it's glued in right here and it's got certain points underneath where if you were a little adventurous and you had a little bit more balls than I do you could probably use a, a, a and if I had two of these figures I probably would have done it I would have used a, a hair dryer or maybe dipped them in some hot water took an exacto knife and just kind of sliced if this were a real knife I would have just sliced underneath like that all around and just taken this thing off and then underneath you would have just had this piece here so I don't know why <laughs> I would have done that but I'd be just out of curiosity I like taking things apart um, he comes with a, a sword but with no sheath so there's nowhere to put it so he's got to either hold it or that's it he there's a lot of a uh, lot of lot of noise going on down here on his belt this is a knife that does not come out there's a little pat pouch that does not open there's a patch over here that does not open. Very Jesus-y, because he's, you know, part of the whole Crusades era of history. He's kind of like Assassin's Creed Batman, if you will. Very, a lot of Catholic uh, imagery here. Like on his sword, too. He's got the, it's, it's, it's a Jesus sword, if you look. There you go. But, uh, yeah, like I said, there's nowhere to put it, so what I just did was that I just took, like, uh, some electrical tape and just, you know, I don't know if you can see it there. I just created like a loop and they just stuck it on his back and it's all non-permanent if I want to remove this I can remove it at any time it won't leave a mark and I just slide it right in there not, I know it doesn't look pretty it's not, I'm not trying to enter any beauty contests okay this is just so that I can put it somewhere so put it on my shelf and uh, I know where the sword's at I don't have to go digging for it in a bin or in a shoebox somewhere but uh, his art like I said, going back to his articulation, yeah, his shoulders, we already touched upon that. It's very, very restricted by the shoulder pads. He's got a upper bicep, swivel, um, only single jointed elbows, which it's kind of uh, irksome, but it hits 90, so what are you going to do? He's got the typical McFarlane wrist joint that go in all directions, ball joint and hinge. Um, he's got two points of articulation at the, uh, at the abdomen, lower and mid, so you can crunches a little bit from the top and then he can crunch a little bit at the bottom let me give you a better motion of that and then when you put it put it together this is how far he down he goes which is good I like it I mean he's got a ton of armor on you know what I mean he's not exactly a spider-man or a, I don't know nightcrawler but he for the amount of poses that you want a character like him to hit, he can get it. He can get it all. And like most McFarlane um, figures, he do, they do great splits. I mean, he can Van Dam that beautifully. But uh, he can't really Glenn Webb it because of his boots. He's He's got these funky looking, uh, Peter Pan looking boots with uh, the little, it goes up. It goes a little bit up high here that kind of blocks the articulation from 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 pivot creating a, a, a real kind of ankle pivot motion so I don't even know how to how would I I guess the best Glenn Webb split I can give you would be like that maybe you know but I mean uh, no complaints listen I, I I like the boots I'm not complaining about it I just just to let you know in case he's got double jointed uh, knees that kick, he can kick his own butt, which is great. He's got this really, really amazing neck articulation. I kind of saved the neck articulation. Let's save the best for last because I wanted to talk about this a lot. Um, he has this lower neck joint, which allows for great, great range. Oh, I love that. And then the hood is very, very soft. It's made of the same soft plastic as these streaks in the back here just to give you an idea of what you're working with when you touch it and you can manipulate it in a lot of ways 
But the articulation doesn't end there. He also has this um, ball joint in the back of his, of this face plate, for a lack of a better word. And I'll show you what that means uh, clear in a second. But as you articulate the neck motion up, looking up, looking down, bobbing side to side, you can also independently move the face to go up. And it's not necessarily a head because you could pop this thing off, the face off rather, starring John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. You can pop the face off and as you can see it's like a face plate. And the, there's a ball joint that goes back, not not up, down up, but side to side. It, it goes, it's perpendicular to the face, which is, I thought, a weird uh, design choice. But it works. It works. And it pops into the neck as such. So I can peel this back and show you. So if I were to peel the hood back, this is getting a little sex eddy. If I can peel the hood back and pop the faceplate back in, then you, you're going to understand how the articulation, get a better understanding of how the articulation movement works. Alright? So you get two points of articulation. You get in the neck, in the low neck that moves it all around, and then you get the faceplate that allows for an independent mo motion up and down. I feel like you guys might be getting nauseous because there's so much movement on my part. I'm sorry about this body cam. I feel like a cop chasing somebody down a dark alley. Okay, there we go. So yeah, he can move his head, or his face rather, the faceplate, uh, all over within the within the hood. And then you can move the hood independently. Alright? Um, so yeah, overall, great figure, everyone's raving about this guy, everyone, you know, he was sold out in a lot of places upon first, uh, first release, oh, I gotta get that back in, and, uh, I totally understand why, yeah, if you don't have, for a $20 figure, also, yeah, man, remember, these McFarlane figures, they're $20, they are, right now, right now, as I, I'm gonna have to give the best bang for the buck award to McFarlane Toys, Granted, they're the new kid on the new kid on the block in terms of their DC and their Fortnite guys, but um, Marvel Legends, if they made more twenty five, their twenty McFarlane's twenty dollar figures, in my opinion, are on par with the Marvel Legends twenty five dollar figures in terms of sculpt and accessories and paint and articulation. Um, but yeah. But you get more. You get more money. You get they're they're, they're bigger figures. They're seven inch scale figures. Um, oh, I wanted to kind of compare it to uh, another McFarlane Toys classic. Uh, well, classic, but a favorite is a Spawn. And I can lean down a little bit to give you guys a better height differential. See, he's supposed to be six four. Spawn is what six two. So this is kind of weird. You know what I mean? Ugh. That kind of bothers me. I just wish McFarlane Toys was more consistent in terms of scale across the board. But this te technically, this is a Mortal Kombat figure, and this is, of course, a DC, specifically White Knight Returns figure. So I guess that's the that's the justification. But <sighs> McFarlane Toys, McFarlane Toys, come on, McFarlane, keep your figures, you know, keep your figures in scale. All right, that's all I got for today. Well, that's all I got for this guy. Next review, I'm going to do uh, White Knight Batman.